I'm Kindo, and it's a beautiful March morning in 2017. So what better time to talk about binary patterns in tidal cycles? Enjoy. All right. So I want to share a, uh, a technique that I've been using over the last couple months for creating what I call inverse patterns or binary patterns in tidal cycles. And it's really fun. At least I think so. So I, I don't remember who came up with the implementation originally. It came up on the Tidal Cycles Slack channel, and I tried to do a search earlier, but I, I couldn't find the original author um, for this technique. But um, nonetheless, we will proceed. So I've just got a, I'm just gonna start with a kick drum sample here, like so. And what I want is, I want the kick drum, um, I want the rhythm to be defined by the gain. So if I create a, uh, a gain pattern here, like so, what I'm going to do is, uh, or what's going to happen is the sample is going to play on each of these eight notes, either with a gain of one or a gain of zero. And it'll sound like this. So the pattern on the left of the hash is what defines the rhythm. Um, yeah, in this case, we've got a rhythm of eight notes with a, a gain value of one or zero. So the next thing I want to do is I, I want to have a second pattern that plays on the zeros instead of the ones. So I want another pattern to have an inverted value for the gains. So if I take this and maybe replace this with a clap, in a live or improv setting, I don't I don't want to have to change, you know, copy and paste and then edit all these values like this. This is not cool. We don't want to do that. We want to avoid that. So we will we will refactor this, I guess you could say, uh, with a do block, and I'm going to define a pattern in a variable. So we're going to move our pattern out like so, and then, so let's get the cat clap out of there for a second. Let's just get rid of that. So we've now changed our code so that the pattern is defined in a variable up here, and then the kick drum is, the kick drum pattern, uh, or I should say it's gain pattern is just using that, that pattern variable string. Like that. Okay, so now I want to add the clap pattern, but I need to, I need to set the gain equal to something else. So what is that? So what we're going to do is define an inverse function. We're going to say inverse 1 equals 0 and inverse 0 equals 1. We'll eval that. And now what we can do is set the gain of the clap pattern equal to inverse, and this funky operator, I forget what it's called, pat. So this will now flip that pat uh, and create an inverse. So all the ones become zeros and all the zeros become ones for that, that clap gain pattern. And if we've typed everything correctly, it'll sound like this. Yeah, perfect. So that's, that's kind of, uh, the starting point. Uh, and now what's cool is I can improvise with this, this pat variable while things are going and everything changes. You get the idea, pretty simple. Uh, of course, we don't have to use gain. This could be anything else. We can use this with pan, which also has kind of an interesting effect with, with zero and one values. And so if we switch it to pan, we, we get this. Some interesting stereo stuff going on. And of course, uh, we can even maybe rotate this a little bit, shift time around and we'll get some maybe more syncopated results.
Yeah. All right. So change this back to gain. All right. So that's that's really the foundation of, of getting this all to work. Um, now I mentioned shifting time around. I, I think you know there's many ways to use title to create patterns very quickly on the fly or on the spot, and that this is one way to do that. Um, so this isn't the only way, but I think this this method allows you to quickly create a new new pattern still still using this this pat as the foundation and using the inverse gain concept as as kind of a, a starting point so if i wanted to create a new snare pattern let's say um gain pat sound snare and then just start rotating time around like so you start getting some interesting syncopations You may not want to use these exact sounds, but um, by just everything using that same rhythm for the volume, for the gain, and just shifting time around, you can quickly develop some other interesting rhythms. And of course, you can shift time around in different ways. Um, if you've seen my previous videos, I, I love using this fold every function to move time around in multiple cycles. You get the idea. Um, so that's a, a quick way to really leverage inverses and gain patterns to kind of flip things around and, and, and kind of launch as a launching point. Launch. I'm trying to use the word launch right now, and it's not, it's not working. OK. All right, one other little point about this is um, with samples that have a long tail on them like a, a long duration so uh if you've seen previous videos of mine you know that i like to use the cut param to truncate long running samples so that they don't bleed into themselves but one interesting side effect of this approach it's neither good nor bad is that the sample will cut itself even when it has a gain of zero so you end up with these silence gaps like that. If I remove cut, you can hear the difference. And put it back. So that's something to just be conscious of if you like to use cut. And uh, you know, if you're filling in the spaces with zeros uh, or the in the inverse pattern, then you know it may not really make a difference because those spaces where the sound gets truncated are going to be filled in with something else. So if I put, um, I don't know, uh, let's do a nasty bass sound here. Um, we'll we'll cut have that one cut itself too. So in that case, if you're using cut, if you're filling in those gaps, you're not really going to hear them anyway. So just something to keep in mind. All right. Uh, well, that's that's all I really wanted to show. Um, hopefully you found this interesting. And uh, I'll see you next time.